Good evening, friends, and welcome to Up Up, Down Down, Left to Right. Amen. I am Adam Glass, and we are, as always, playing retro Christian video games. And today, we have one of our retroist. That's a word now. <laughs> this is the earliest release from a company we played a lot of games from, Wisdom Tree. And we talked about Wisdom Tree's background in the past, but the quick version is that they started life as a company called Color Dreams, and Color Dreams wanted to make adult games, and therefore couldn't put them out through regular Nintendo channels. And then, once they learned that they couldn't put how to put them out, which was a uh, bypass of the lockout chip on regular Nintendo machines... Uh, they instead decided to switch gears and make Christian video games because they couldn't sell their unlicensed Nintendo games in regular video game stores because those regular video game store owners were afraid of making Nintendo mad. So instead, they decided, they thought, we'll get into the Christian game market. And this is the game that started it all as far as Wisdom Tree's relationship with Christianity goes. These were not Christians making games, for the most part, that I know of. Uh, no one in the actual company appears to have been uh, Christian, uh, as we discussed pretty pretty in-depth, I think, on the Super Noah's Ark 3D episode, if you want to go back and check that out. But the information's out there, even if you don't want to get it from me. This one started life as... Well, obviously, we've got three different games. This is a pretty common thread in Wisdom Tree games. It's to take a bunch of small releases that couldn't have stood alone as their own release and theme them. So I don't know necessarily that these were all developed as one thing. Uh, each of them will be a variation on aspects of Super Mario Bros. 2. If you check out that date, 1991, you realize that this 8-bit regular Nintendo Super Mario Bros. 2 ripoff came out the same year, in fact, a few months after Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo, which had launched for Christmas the previous year, 1990, if I remember correctly. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Wisdom Tree rolled out this game with a 3-foot... Bible Adventures display that they could send to Christian bookstores, as well as a VHS cassette that I wish I could find, uh, showing gameplay with promotional materials. Um, you'll see this a lot for... Uh, I, I've seen a lot of them in regards to, say, uh, rental places. Um of little promo videos, like five minutes long, about how renting this video game or movie or buying it so that you can rent it to your customers is going to be such a great financial uh, decision. Well, apparently a lot of Christian bookstores bought into this uh, and <laughs> Wisdom Trees quote, this game promotes Bible literacy and teaches children about the Bible while they play a fun and exciting Super Mario Brothers style video game. Uh, <laughs> it worked. They apparently sold 350,000 copies. Uh, it's probably pretty good for a video game in 1991, but who knows. Uh, Sonic came out that year and sold over a million, but 350,000 is not <laughs> nothing to shake a, shake a stick at. Um, maybe a, a very big stick you could shake. If you could lift it. Uh, you may have noticed that in the background so far, we have an 8-bit version of Box J Suit Joy of Man's Desiring. Uh, yeah. Bach is beautiful music. This version, maybe not. I, if I remember correctly, Douglas Adams uh, was really into Bach. And he's, growing up, he was one of my favorite writers. Famously, an atheist too, but loved Bach despite Bach being uh, religious Christian music at its heart. Uh, Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring, 
It's pretty, pretty clearly uh, a song about Jesus. It's right there in the title. But in the first Dirk Gently novel, Bach is a... The background music of the universe, basically, is Bach in that novel. It's very... The way it plays out is kind of hard to describe, particularly without giving away a lot of one of the most tightly written mystery novels I've ever experienced. It's a beautiful book. Um, but I don't know that Adams would describe this particular take on Bach as quite as lovely. Uh, he had a famous quote. What was it? Beethoven writes songs that tell you what it's like to be Beethoven. And Mozart tells you what it's like to be Mozart. Bach tells you what it's like to be the universe, I think. This tells you what it's like to be an 8-bit universe. What a world. <laughs> I did learn. I don't think I shared this because I don't remember knowing it prior to this. Uh, but the way that they worked around the lockout chip. So it's basically within every Nintendo is a chip that checks to see whether or not the cartridge put in is an officially licensed Nintendo product. And if it is, it itself has a chip that confirms, and they talk to each other, and then you can use it. Now, there are different ways to work around it, and one way that I've never played a game that needed to do this, but I've, I've seen it in action. One way was that there were certain pirated cartridges that came with a cord that came off of them that you could plug into a legitimate cartridge, and they would just piggyback off of that cartridge's legitimate chip. Not so here. Uh, <laughs> Wisdom Tree's technique was much more direct they would send a negative voltage charge from the chip on power up from the cartridge to the chip, which would shut down the chip or at least cause it to skip enough that the game would load without checking. But it wouldn't damage the machine. It wasn't strong enough to damage the machine. And in fact, resetting the box would reset the chip. So you could still play licensed Nintendo games and the Nintendo would never be the wiser. Not that Nintendo is that smart anyway. So they literally they literally electrocuted the Nintendos into letting them play their games, which is beautiful. I love so much. Uh, but let's uh, let's get into this. We've got Noah's Ark, we've got Baby Moses, and we've got David and Goliath, and we might as well go right in order. I have played a little bit of Noah's Ark. I can remember playing. Uh, but... I don't remember playing either of the others. This wasn't... Exodus was was the one I really remember playing at other people's houses. And uh, Spiritual Warfare, which of course was the first game we played for the project, I remember explicitly very well playing a lot of that. But this one, this one I don't really remember. So... But Noah's Ark feels... Obviously, we played Super Noah's Ark 3D, but I'm not confusing that. This is a 2D platformer Noah's Ark that I, I, absolutely certain I played before. But let's see. God saw how corrupt the earth had become and said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all the people. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth. There's a lot of ellipses here. Uh, you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female. Genesis 12 to 14, 17 and 19. That doesn't... I wonder if that reference is right. Okay. So I can, I can dig down. I can jump. I can stack animals. Snakes hurt me. Apparently, I will not be collecting any snakes. Oh, I lost that animal. I 
can climb. Thanks for that hint, guys. This is very slow. Okay, what, what am I doing? Oh, I'm throwing animals. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll get those guys in a second. I want to try to get in that cave. Okay. Yeah, you already gave me that one. Oh, but I guess it's good to remember. What do we got in here? A dead end? Anything down here? No. Nothing. Nothing worthwhile in any of this cave. How do I finish the level? <laughs> Getting ahead of myself thinking about how to finish the level. Because first, I gotta figure out how to get out of the cave. <laughs> oh, these controls are not good. All right. I've lost the animal now. I got that horse. All right, let's go back and get the, get the, oh. Don't you, you horse. Oh yeah. While walking, press B will make you run faster and jump further. Oh, there we go. And then a verse from Proverbs for some reason. With you are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. Well, let me pick up that pig. Monkey. I feel like that monkey's bad. You're a bad monkey. Pick up the pig. Or did I just miss? I don't know. Okay, so the fact that the run fast button and the throw button are the same button. All right. Well, there. I finished the level with with exactly one horse. Okay, so I got to go back. I will be running around collecting everything. Excellent. Stop.
This game's bad. And it should feel bad. <laughs> Throwing a bull at a pig does not help. All right. I don't like this one. Yeah, it's just... Why would I need to rotate my stack? Lady cow, go in. Oh, that was a male cow. Not what I expected. Stop. All right. I believe I'm about willing to give this one two more minutes. See, that's why I expected that to be the guy cow. Because it's a bull that keeps bullying me. There's a lady cow, though, obviously. Why? None of that makes sense. Well, oh, that's the oxen that keeps bullying me. What is this? Why does it vaguely look like the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> I can throw it at things and do damage. I can knock out monkeys with it. Great. Oh. And pigs will eat it. Horses. All right. <laughs> well, at least I've played long enough to figure out what's going on. Kind of. Still can't pick up that pick. Must be greased. in there. All 
There's a banana. Oh, the pig's following me now that I have food. Interesting. Still can't pick it up, though. Can it jump? No, it cannot. I wonder if things I've already picked up stop spawning. What good? What does it do for the pig to follow me? There, I can knock out the pig too. Great. See if I can manage to beat one single level of Noah's Ark. Nobody understands except for me and my monkey. All right, I need two snakes, which apparently I can pick up, and one more pig. Well, there's our pig friend. That'll do me. Bye, pig. Oh, well, there's a snake. Throwing hay at snakes does not work. There's just so many snakes. Hmm. 
Why do you mock me? Controls are not great. I think my strategy is to wait until whatever that thing is sticks his head out, sticks it out of this hole here, and then throw this banana at it. The snakes are killing themselves now, so that's helpful. I'm supposed to collect a snake, but every time I touch a snake, well that didn't help. There's someone watching right now. I'll even wager their name is Jill. Who's screaming at me about how to catch the snakes. Or that I'm not catching the right snakes. Not trying to catch the right snakes. There's some secret snakes somewhere. This is why you should be in the chat live so that we can figure out what's going on here all right i'm about to give up whatever that thing that keeps sticking its head out looks like a bird of some sort it's too fast so far for me to do this Snakes just hurt themselves. Have I been over every inch of the place? Should I try taking the banana in? Snakes, male and female. I mean, maybe the thing that keeps sticking its head out is the lady snake. I hadn't thought of that yet. There's a snake. Take the banana too. Well, this is still only one snake though, so. That was a boy snake. Good to know. Now, when I posted about this, the reason I say that the person yelling at me, her name is Jill, is that I posted about how I was going to play this tonight on Facebook, and my friend Jill responded that she had played this a lot as a child. Unfortunately, she hasn't joined to advise me. There are a lot of snakes here. All right, I'm done. Let's reset.
and see what baby Moses is like. Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile. But let every girl live. Is this one, twenty-two, two, one, two, three. A lot of, a lot more ellipses. Okay, so we are <laughs> Miriam, uh, or uh, Moses' sister, and we are taking Moses. So far, taking Moses away from spiders. Uh, I don't know that I'm taking damage here. Oh, there's some men with spears. I am taking damage. Press down and A to jump down. That's not what jump. That's not jumping, that's just falling. More Bible verses because as the as the pro materials said, this Bible this game promotes Bible literacy. Can't jump in the river, turns out. Yes. Well not that really matters. Same bad bass music. Oh. And walk in the clouds. God is our refuge and our strength and ever present help in trouble. And that's why I can walk in the clouds. Spiders falling from the clouds. Where I got that hint. Oh, Moses, come back. What even was that? Great work. All right. I'm doing a little better at this one. Oh. Well, that's not great. I lost I lost Moses. <laughs> Was not expecting These spiders jump so high. Look how buff she is. I missed. All right. We got a level. No. Wasn't there a jump block there last time? There's the jump. Now I've thrown the baby again and into the bath water. Hi. <sighs> That was not. Nope. I need that baby. Why would the bird get me and not just kidnap? Oh, even the Egyptians can walk on clouds. Don't stop. These birds are mean. All right, this one's less annoying than Noah. I'll give it that. Oh, 
Nope. How dare you? Just massive amounts of spiders out of nowhere. All right. We have this one we're gonna try. What happens if I just leave the baby? I'm not gonna find out. Can't find out what happens if I leave the baby when I can't get past the baby. Let's try David and Goliath. David carrying a sheep and a slingshot. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. <clears throat> Gather four sheep and bring them to the two corral. This one's going to feel... Well, that's not a sheep. All right, so same game, except there's squirrels. And a big stack of sheep. And a lion. What is Okay, so the lion has knocked out all of... That's the corral. No. This dang squirrel has knocked out my sheep. All right. I know I haven't found all the sheep. I only found two of the sheep. It's not easy what I just did. Sheep did not fly down here. a bad game. All of these are bad games. I got your stupid hint. Alright. No other sheep up there. So, there's sheep. Nope. Righteous man cares for the needs of his animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. I guess that one kind of relates to what we're doing here. Nope. Do not want that lion to be here near me. And my sheep friends. No. Yeah, I know. Okay. So I missed one on the ground. None. None. Of the other by other games had appropriate Bible verses, but this one is batting a thousand so far. 
Okay, liked this one better when I had... Stop. One more sheep. Oh, the lion was licking itself. Hey, can I? No. I cannot walk on the mountains. The lion apparently only cares when I have a sheep. If the lion can jump. The lion can jump. That should be it. Great. You saved all four sheep. There's a cave in this one. No, there wasn't. I thought it was a cave. But it's just... No, don't... You. Oh, that's not a sheep anyway. Take it. Well, it seems I'm actually good at this one, so there's that. Oh, scorpions. Nope. Too much going on. Stop. Oh, but I have found all the sheep game. How is this the easiest one? Is that a badger? Where's 
that? Manure? Is that what that's supposed to be? I suppose it's easy to get David related verses if you just quote the Psalms. It's a lot of those. Stupid gopher. Maybe it's a bear. I put a squirrel on my stack and lost part of my sheep's head. Why did why did that happen? Okay, I'm just frustrated. I don't like these games when I get frustrated. Okay. Uh, <laughs> obviously. Uh, the marketing promise that these games would promote biblical literacy is only true in the loosest sense of those words in that they are encouraging me to read Bible verses every so often. Bible verses that needlessly interrupt gameplay in a way that has so far been detrimental, usually. The Noah game controlled the worst. This one controls slightly better. The Moses one, since I'm only having to pick up one thing, maybe is the best of the bunch but none of them were that good this was their first attempt well no this was their first release for the christian market this was this was their first pit of shovelware uh so it's not good it does control uh like i said it's like a mario 2 ripoff so it controls a bit and it's got the slowdowns of regular nintendo mario 2 too uh, when there's too many assets on the screen, like you can see now. Um, yeah, it's just not that good a game. I, I'm i glad that I somehow never managed to own this. It did come on a really nice-looking, like, light blue cartridge, though, I remember. Um, I think, I think at least Spiritual Warfare may have come on the same color. But 350,000 copies sold. I wonder how many were actually played more than once. A lot of, a lot of disappointed Christmases in 1991. Christianity, do better. Make art, not this. What am I doing? What am I saying? This wasn't even made by Christians. This was... This was... This was Admittedly, this was made because of an atmosphere Christians created. Uh, and a lot of Christian art is made by people whose personal religious feelings are irrelevant to the actual art being produced. Because 
they're just making it to be sold to a captive audience. And that captive audience will buy anything sold to them until they won't. Which sometimes is hard to predict. Because <laughs> sometimes uh, Christians will stop buying it because uh, the lady singer got a divorce. Uh, <laughs> looking at Amy Grant and Sandy Patty. Sometimes uh, Christians will keep buying it despite the fact that uh, a man was continuously unfaithful or other things. Going to think about Liberty University and Cherry Falwell Jr. on that one. But this, this is no reason to get canceled by Christianity because it's just giving them what they want in a completely innocuous way where parents and grandparents while they're buying their little wooden crosses and the little mirrors with psalms on them various other knickknacks the sort of thing that piss christ is about if you guys are familiar with piss christ i'm gonna lose the music for a second piss christ is a photograph uh by artist Andre Serrano. I couldn't remember his name. That's why I had to look it up. Serrano took a mass-produced plastic crucifix and submerged it in his own urine. This was 1987. He took a picture. He released it. Uh, it caused quite a stir. And a lot of Christian groups condemned it. But Serrano's point in making it was that this piece of mass market plastic was garbage. It was no better than excrement. And it deserved to be treated as excrement. Serrano was a Christian. At the time, he said, I've been a Catholic all my life. I am a follower of Christ. These guys aren't even Christians. <laughs> and at the same time, Serrano is repeatedly being condemned by Christian press. These non-Christians are selling absolute garbage in Christian bookstores around the country. <sighs> what a world. What a world. All right. Anyway, I'm going to be done for this week. I don't know what I'll play next week. I really I haven't planned for a while. Uh, <laughs> probably another... On a, I've, I've still got a backlist of other Wisdom Tree games to go through. So that's always always on the back burner if I can't find anything else. But maybe I'll find something better. Um, but this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. And I hate it. And Jill, I'm sorry that you spent your entire childhood playing this game. I wish you were here to play it for me tonight. Because I don't want to anymore. It's very hard. Because the controls are bad. Uh, and that that's basically what it boils down to. Plus, that lion. <laughs> that's, that stupid lion. <laughs> and my sheep. <laughs> and I hate it. Uh, advantage to this game. Over any other Wisdom Tree game we've played. And half the... Despite, despite the fact that only the Moses section has human enemies... I have no way of attacking, which I think was true, uh, well, not quite. It was true for parts of King of Kings, the early years, which is another uh, Wisdom Tree game that came out this same year. Uh, in that one, the Three Kings section, the camels could spit, and that attacked enemies. But it can't attack enemies, even though the picture of David on the title screen showed a slingshot, and David... Canonically, 
carries a slingshot when he's protecting his sheep because that makes sense and our enemies are lions so but there's no there's no shoot a sh slingshot button Noah has no weapons which makes sense I like the Noah one for for exploring a uh, sort of untouched upon I suppose in the in the biblical narrative the animals just magically show up well magic they show up by the by the will of God uh, Noah having to collect them is kind of silly uh, and I like I like that aspect of it uh, Miriam avoiding <laughs> spiders and soldiers as she takes Noah oh or Noah as she takes Moses across the Nile for some reason uh, when the entire point of that story was that she put him into a basket in the Nile uh, not your narrative doesn't work out it's not encouraging biblical literacy guys this one is just a, it's an adventure of David uh, it's called David and Goliath maybe I don't know how I would fight Goliath in this uh, maybe if I save enough sheep uh, Goliath just falls over but you know what I'm kind of fine without having a David and Goliath game where for instance I have to as David cut off Goliath's head which is biblical instead I get to watch these lions just utterly destroy the sheep or bounce a lot all right really done this time thank you so much for watching up up down down left right amen i am adam glass we'll be back next week probably with another wisdom tree but maybe something else who knows if you have any suggestions be sure to send them my way uh comment here or on the youtube or twitter at me at at the adam glass let me know what you think i should play as far as retro christian games go and i got a pretty loose term retro but find me something and I'll play it, and we'll talk about it theologically and gameplay-wise. For instance, this one, gameplay bad, theology, mediocre at best. Ugh. Good night. <laughs>